I want to talk about the Go for the Green project, and um, this project started more or less in 2015 um, with the refugee movement we had uh, in Austria. There, my whole life changed a little bit, so I decided to support newcomers in Austria. A little bit later, I decided so I want to um, get more information about migration and integration. So I started um, at Danube uh, University, um, Master in Integration uh, Management. And there I had the opportunity to join the Migrant Entrepreneurship Academy. In this academy, so we had to, to design um, support uh, training for migrants who want to start a business. And I had from the beginning the idea, so if somebody is coming to Austria right now and he wants to open a business, it should be a green business. With this idea, uh, Gabriele, Sabra, Doris, Kaiserreiner and I had, so we were um, talking with Klaus and Susanne from Blickpunkt Identity, uh, what they thinking about and they were like, yes, that's a great idea and we could... Um, try to get a funded project from Erasmus Plus. So project coordinator, Blickpunkt, uh, uh, Blickpunkt Identität und uh, uh, Projektpartner, einerseits ICQA mit uh, der uh, Gabriele und mit dem Michael, MGL Video, das ist der Martin, der die Kamera hier bedient. Dann haben wir uh, Bulgarian Council on Refugees and Migrants from Bulgaria with uh, um, uh, Vladimir Kuena, Amy is here. So uh, Queen is the expert for accessibility. Project Phoenix, Michael, he is here, um, operating in uh, Cyprus and in uh, Belgium and Syrian news. Unfortunately, they are not here. Um, they are based in Germany. So, this is Erasmus Plus uh, uh, project. Da haben wir die Key Action Cooperation for Innovation and Exchange uh, for Good Practice. Und Action Type is Partnership for Digital uh, Education Readiness. Klaus already was talking about the design thinking method we are followed with this project. So first of all is to understand uh, what our clients want. Then we defined uh, uh, the ideas. Um, we we had an, a prototype more or less, and we tested this prototype within the focus groups and more well, less now we have the finished product. So we have two, uh, um, four products. So we have products for the newcomers. There's this training program and the certification. And we have project for NGOs. There is a guidance how to conduct and uh, evaluate uh, qualitative interviews with refugees and also a um, program for trainers. As I said before, there's this learning platform. Yeah. But uh, my colleague uh, Vladimir is going to talk about this uh, in a few seconds. So this is more or less, uh, this was the idea and then just a quick overview about the project. Now, Vladimir, Milev, the floor is yours. And I would be happy that you are presenting a little bit, bit the platform. And hello from, the, from my side. I'm going to present the learning platform of the Go for the Green, which is the core of the project since it's combining all, the, all of the outputs of the project. So we are using the most advanced uh, benefits from the online learning technologies in order to, to create the go for the green platform and uh, using all the benefits that the learning platforms and the online learning it's, uh, it's, uh, it's giving to the, to the community. And the, the biggest benefit is that the, the beneficiaries can work uh, anytime and anywhere. Since they're connecting to the internet, they have access to 15 complex modules, to discussion board to create communities among the learners, and also a digital uh, diversity of digital resources that they can use in the, in the learning experience. The, the platform is uh, tailored to the needs of our beneficiaries. It's available in their languages as well as in the partner languages. The platform is available in English, German, Arabic, French, and Bulgarian language, as well as with the influx of the Ukrainian refugees. We published a brief information in uh, Ukrainian and Russian language about, uh, about the, the platform and the certification and learning process. 
how are the modules presented? We are using uh, uh, a complementary and uh, complementary and uh, diverse aspects uh, how the modules are uh, presented. Uh, first, we are starting with the video. After the video, there is a uh, detailed learning material when the people can learn both from video and from a uh, learning material that can be downloaded and used online even with uh, for even by people with uh, poor internet connection. As well as uh, there is a quiz when the beneficiaries can test their knowledge and uh, and go back to the modules if necessary in order to make the modules more interactive. Additionally, there is option for micro certification, which is connected to the ECQI and Gabriel is going to give more details as well as with uh, there is option for feedback to make the learning experience even better and to learn from the learners, the process of learning from the beneficiaries. As I said, all the modules are available to be downloaded with open access in optimized PDF files with low, uh, with, uh, with low, low requirements, as well as uh, they can be used uh, offline, which is a big benefit of our platform that it's uh, that can be used uh, even from people without uh, proper access to internet access. Additionally, that uh, I have mentioned is the, the feedback, the beneficiaries feedback mechanism. The platform is presenting a feedback form that the people can evaluate uh, evaluate our uh, progress and uh, our invention, as well as to suggest new ideas for uh, for uh, for projects in the future. Since this is a project that is going to have uh, uh, have continuation. And of course, the platform is online. It's uh, almost fully it's fully operational for the learners. And uh, new new functionalities like uh, micro certification is going to be at in the future. So, yes, we are waiting also for your feedback about the platform. And on the next workshop, I will be able to give more details about for resources for for the NGOs how you can build by yourself platforms like that based on our experience building digital infrastructure for uh, refugees because our organization became a leader in uh, doing that. Thank you. What we basically did in this Go for the Green project when it comes to certification and uh, sustainability was first to compile a so-called skills cut. Uh, who of you is familiar with the European computer driving license. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. So it follows the same principle, uh, uh, meaning that first you have to compile, assess, yeah, collect relevant skills and not theoretical ones, but those skills and competences you need to be fully uh, computer literate, right? And the same principle is at ECQA. It's not a, a certificate for uh, theoretical purposes or a degree like uh, at universities. It is a driving license, yeah? meaning that those who held this uh, certificate, they are supposed to really be able to apply the knowledge and skills of a green entrepreneur, in our case, in practice, right? Uh, so, of course, uh, you have to be careful with um, compiling this skill card or competence framework, it's also called. Yeah? So that was the, the first step, and we even have two skills cards. One for the green entrepreneurs and the others for their trainers and consultants. And as you see here, we avoided uh, uh, the term refugee in the first certificate for refugees because no refugee entrepreneur likes to be called refugee entrepreneur. <laughs> he or she is uh, an entrepreneur. Um, and the second uh, task, main task of uh, ECQA, of the certification organization in this project, was to develop an entire so-called certification scheme. Yeah? for the go for the green project Oop, for, oh. <laughs> and this includes the certification of the skills card but also of the entire you know uh, structure including uh, the training materials right uh, the the trainers yeah? 
the the so-called self-assessment. We call it also quiz. Yeah. Uh, uh, in at ECQ, we call it self-assessment questions, where you where you can assess um, how mature your knowledge is already. Yeah. What what uh, do you know already? Sufficient to pass uh, the the uh, exam or not? And all this, of course, has to be harmonized, right? Uh, any ECQA exam, any ECQA um, training has to be the same all over the world, not only in the European Union, but all over the world. That's why everything has to be standardized, right? Which is good. It, it, it might seem a little bit boring on the one hand, like standards and harmonization, standardization, uh, is from time to time. On the other hand, uh, it's about reliability. Those people who do the exam, let's say in Syria, yeah. uh, must have the same conditions, the same you know uh, structure, the same pool of exam questions, the, the same uh, 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 architecture uh, as in any on any other country. Yeah. So that's that provides. Uh, uh, security and and also uh, reliability of the of the certificate. And this is sorry, I jumped off obviously. What did I do here? Oops. Ah, does it go the other way around? That's interesting. And this skill card is a combination of digital skills, right? You remember the call was, we, we were quite a little bit pushed into that direction uh, to have also uh, digital skills included, which is good because also as a green entrepreneur, without your, your uh, digital uh, technologies, without social media, without all these new uh, technologies, you will not be able to really, you know, uh, found and and uh, promote your business, so that makes sense. Uh, and there we were, where and you know that these uh, frameworks, these uh, um, competences frameworks, they all exist. We have great European uh, digital uh, skills frameworks, and we just had to uh, pick. Yeah, we, together with our focus groups, we had to to pick those basic skills, basic digital skills a green entrepreneur uh, would need. And uh, these are the these first five uh, learning elements, finding and management relevant digital content, using digital uh, technologies for green business. So this is not the general one. We really wanted to make sure that it directly applies and is relevant for green businesses. This this was kind of a, of a, um, a, a tricky situation because whenever it, it went too general, we had to think uh, together with our focus group uh, members, uh, is this really relevant uh, and to what extent for green business? So these were the five selected from this very, uh, uh, you know, large uh, competence pool in the, the digi, digi comp, it's, it's called the digital um, competence framework. Plus, we also merged it. Yeah, Skillcut contains also five learning elements from the uh, entrepreneurial um, uh, competence framework. And you see, again, it's quite general on the one hand. Yeah, Opportunities, creativity, financial and economic skills. Of course, this is a must, right? Mobilizing resources, planning, management learning through experience, and it's all uh, targeted and focused on green business. So not too general, not too, okay, there, there are a lot of training programs, of, of course, for uh, founding a, a business yeah, and becoming an entrepreneur. But with this, uh, with this focus on green entrepreneurship, uh, this, is, um, this is quite rare. And uh, it, it is really also meant to make the European Green Deal tangible and, and uh, um, applicable, actually. And the third component of the skill card for, for green entrepreneurs 
uh, is uh, critical skills, we call it. Uh, in the past, they, they always called it the soft skills or personal skills. Yeah? Any uh, 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 person who, who, is, uh, who is an entrepreneur who, or who is an entre intrapreneur, even in a company, you need a lot of skills. Uh, thinking like an entrepreneur knows that these are the critical skills, right? So this in particular uh, with respect to green businesses. So it's not the business as usual. Uh, you need to understand what is ethical and sustainable thinking. It might sound trivial. It's not. If you go through the training material, if you check out the, the assessment questions, you will find that, yeah, uh, we have to ask ourselves these questions um, on a regular basis. Yeah? If, if we are still on track, let's say. Yeah. Uh, motivation, perseverance. Of course, this is relevant for anyone uh, who who uh, who gets into that uh, uh, adventure to uh, to found a company. Uh, mobilizing, working with others, coping with uncertainty, ambiguity, and risk, and taking the initiative. So, so these are the ones again we picked from Entrecomp, the entrepreneurial uh, competence framework, together with the focus groups. And, and this is also what we would like uh, to ask you in the workshop uh, to give us feedback to. Is there something missing? Yeah. Is, isn't is it uh, maybe crucial to have other skills from your perspective and from the perspective uh, of the people you're working with? Right. So uh, we are, we are, we are, of course, interested in, in the, uh, uh, in any continuation of uh, working and uh, learning from uh, from uh, focus group members, even after the end of the project. Uh, what we did uh, with respect to certification, you see, you have 15 learning elements from business skills, digital skills, uh, critical skills. So this is quite elaborated, right? The training material on this wonderful platform, it's really huge. Yeah? It might be overwhelming for someone who just, you know, uh, uh, arrived in a country with a refugee background. So the new trend is anyhow uh, to to uh, develop uh, micro certificates, mean breaking down a large body of knowledge and and uh, competences to smaller entities. Right? We have even these batches. You have when you when you are in social media or the MOOCs, the massive online open courses. Uh, you can you can do uh, micro small certificates for a small uh, uh, amount of of uh, content. Uh, so that's why we were breaking it down from these fifteen uh, elements uh, into um, into fifteen training modules. Right? We did not follow uh, this approach of the uh, of the skill card. Uh, that first the business skills, then the digital skills, and then the critical uh, skills. But since uh, Blickpunkt, the coordinator, are both uh, pedagogical experts and psychological experts, uh, of course, it was then grouped uh, onto 15 training modules uh, you also saw at the platform. And they, uh, uh, they cover three main parts. Uh, chronological parts also when you really start your business yeah so you first have to develop your green business idea uh, you plan it uh, and then you realize it yeah so that comes uh, logical and natural um, when we uh, talk about certification we of course need also to consider the level yeah the level of competence it makes a huge difference if you um, if you have a university degree in this, in this subject field, or if you just, you know, uh, are, are interested in but have has a have a, a, a quite limited uh, educational background, right? Or a completely different one where uh, entrepreneurial thinking was not uh, was not needed, right? So these uh, um, European qualifications framework levels, the EQF levels, they cover actually a, a really wide range, even with the with uh, uh, children and and um, uh, pupils, right? So this uh, one, two, uh, one and two, two, two and three, there we are on the basic level, 
Yeah, I took it from Green Sand, actually, uh, uh, also a large uh, uh, sustainability project where the European Green Deal uh, shall be uh, made tangible for uh, also the younger people, right? Uh, we are in, in bold is is highlighted that we are on level four to five, both for professionals, right? And not all of our target groups, of course, are level four to five. So uh, we have to face the situation that's a very heterogeneous uh, group of of refugees. Our partners we're working with, uh, so we actually cover uh, all the levels until five. Yeah, in in this in this EQF uh, level, uh, meaning that um, it it's also included when you do the, um, the 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 training and then the certification. It's on the level four, but that doesn't mean that that all the level one to three is <laughs> is not interesting. It, it is it is based on these levels, right? But what is definitely excluded is any academic level. Right. This is not our our target group, and not the aim of this project. This is how a certificate looks like, and and my uh, colleague from ECJ GmbH will uh, elaborate on that. You see, on the first page is actually um, uh, is uh, uh, the, the basic uh, the basic uh, personal data, and also then the uh, the date of the exam and the and the. the electronic signature of, of Michael and also the the date of uh, uh, how long it's valid ex expiry expiration expi expiring no. and on the second page is always uh, the description what uh, is really covered by this micro certificate right which unit it might be two units it might be one unit yeah? it might be 10 units yeah when you're more advanced, uh, you might uh, have then uh, even more units. But you can collect. That's the principle of micro-certification, that you do not need to sit all the exams uh, uh, at the same time for all the modules. That would be really overwhelming. I think even for trainers, <laughs> it could be overwhelming. Yeah? Uh, but uh, that you can collect. And what is the core for candidates, people interested in in uh, sitting the exams to qualify uh, as a, a green entrepreneur is the is is a six page uh, detailed uh, instruction on how to get the certificate right so really with all the with the skill card of course included you see here knowledge and skill requirements uh, then you have what to do how to register yeah, uh, uh, to sit the exam and uh, of course you all know that multiple choice questions are nice, but you could be talented as I am just to make good guesses, right? So we do not uh, rely too much on on the, um, uh, on on, uh, on multiple choice questions. Uh, that's why an oral exam, right? Just to talk to people to understand: Is this person really already a practitioner? Is he or she able to? become a successful entrepreneur right so that is really the the, the issue here uh, and this actually uh, will be done as an oral examination then followed by these multiple choice exam and everything is explained here uh, also recertification this is a requirement uh, of an iso standard for uh, certification of persons so um in our case, uh, we we will have every three. I think we have to des decide even on that if it's uh, every third year um, uh, there is a f certification needed. At least for the trainers, this is this is highly important. And then you see uh, with all the uh, also the, the the deadlines what what you have to keep in mind when you are um, interested in the certification. Let's move to sustainability. You know, these EU projects, they are great. And uh, sometimes two years, sometimes three years, you have time to develop all these great uh, resources. Uh, and then after the end of the project, there should be a life <laughs> uh, after the end, right? And this is what we uh, ensure 
by nature with the agreements uh, we do with uh, with the project partners first, right? And it's the so-called job role committee, right? You need a you need a body, you need people, yeah, uh, experts who care for the up to dateness of the for for the quality of the exam questions, for instance, but also the skill card. Yeah? Imagine. Uh, in in our time, everything is very you know flexible and and, and changes all the time. So it's important that a, a committee have has a look on a regular basis on the correctness and up to dateness of the materials and particular also skill card and exam questions. Uh, recently, we uh, we made a, um, a shift at ECQA. Uh, the job role committees, they kind of uh, had a life in parallel, yeah? not meeting uh, each other too much. Uh, and this we actually wanted to change and this did change. Uh, and now we opened it up more for so-called, we also call it focus groups. Uh, and there, of course, go for the green. The project is in two large focus groups of experts, of international experts. It's not only sustainability because of this green subject, it is also accessibility because we really uh, uh, tried hard to make the materials as accessible as ever possible. And it, it is an attempt. We, we never reached 100%. <laughs> Amy will uh, talk about that uh, from, from Koina. Uh, but it's important that we, uh, we were fully aware uh, that, uh, that this is uh, that accessibility, digital accessibility uh, is really the key uh, for, uh, for 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 uh, for the for the understanding but also the use uh, of the materials uh, so this is the first uh, the first part of access of, of sustainability uh, that we will sign agreements with the partners yeah? uh, hopefully all of them will join this uh, this uh, job role uh, committee and focus group uh, what is always also uh, the second part is agreements with uh, training organizations, with uh, uh, exam organizations within the consortium and beyond, right? Everybody who does trainings for, for uh, refugees, for entrepreneurs uh, is uh, cordially invited yeah, to, uh, uh, to sign an agreement to use training material to... to uh, to adapt it, yeah, but to to follow the the structure of the of the ECQ skills card, yeah, and to to do trainings, certified trainings, and then uh, encourage uh, people to to sit the exams. Usually, this is a uh, this is a uh, an argument, the sales argument, also, right? When you can say it's not another training course. It is a certification course. Yeah, uh, you you will uh, you will be fit after this training to sit exams for a European certificate. So usually, uh, this is quite a good argument. And of course, for training organizations, it's enlarged their their training portfolio. So there will be agreements starting again with the uh, with the consortium partners and then go beyond. And last but not least, which is also um, uh, very important, is you know that there are a lot of, of uh, European uh, projects similar yeah, uh, to, uh, to ours in terms of dealing with, uh, with sustainability and, and Green Deal issues. And uh, there we have a, a partnership with the Green Sand project. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And uh, uh, there... Our, our target groups will be uh, invited uh, for further um, for further not only trainings but online uh, online um, um, initiatives and uh, and apps right where they can uh, give flesh to the bone of the of this green uh, businesses and that's it it's about entrepreneurship that means we need to talk about the exams um, uh, within the project lifetime, of course, the exams are for free, but after the project lifetime, they can't be free. That's the same for the training. The training needs to be hosted and training needs to be updated. So there has to be kind of a revenue out of that. Um, either it's small, zero or large, that's up to the, to the, to the companies. But 
Um, the question came up, uh, how to do the certificate. Uh, there's several ways that we will put on the uh, platform and that will be available. The first one is contact the ECQA and we'll point out to you where to go, what to do, how to get your training or how to get your exam. The second one is if you have training organization, somebody who's doing the training with you, simply contact them. They should know how to do the exam and organize the exam for you means grouping them together. Uh, you have seen that there's kind of 15 modules finding to an overall certificate of entrepreneur, green entrepreneurship. The problem is um, typically, if you look at Coursera, things like that, the courses are for free, that's fine. If you want to do the certificate, it costs money. So what would we typically do, as we said, within those, co those uh, project lifetimes, everything is fine. We don't charge anybody. After the project lifetime, every exam, not every certificate, but every exam has to be paid for. And that means we don't mind if for an exam you take one module, two modules, three modules, five modules. You pay per exam trial. If you fail, well, you can do it again. If you pass, that's fine. If you pass one module, five modules, seven modules, that's up to you. Um, there is currently uh, some things going on that I want to share with you. The one thing is... We're currently working on an automated uh, insertion of those micro-certificates badges into the Europass. We should be done by, well, I don't want to be too optimistic, so let's say end of the year. Uh, this should be an automation. It prompted that Europass is not as cooperative as we thought, but we will fix that. Uh, the other part will be uh, we're currently working on a self-platform, which is based on a WordPress format whether people don't need to go to training organizations, don't need to go to us, but simply apply there, pay there, and do their online exams there. The only problem is the exams done there need to be done with an online proctoring system. That means they're automatically recorded. There's somebody watching them. And this is typical American way. So you point your ID card into the uh, screen and you have to have a certain setup for that. Um, so that's basically everything in a nutshell. And uh, if any question comes up, feel free to ask. There's no such thing as dumb question because well, it's our daily business. So we might be missing some things that are quite obvious to us, but might be not so obvious for you. Thanks for your attention. Hi, my name is Amy. So I'm Egyptian, but I'm from France right now. So I work uh, at Koina. It's a small company and we're specialized in accessibility digital accessibility to be uh, specific. Um, so I'm here to represent my boss. Her name is Armoni. So shout out to Armoni. Um, so um, I'm going to explain to you briefly what digital accessibility means. Um, because personally, before I started working at Koina, I did not know anything about it. And there are so many different misconceptions about what it actually means. And then I'm going to talk a bit about uh, how we implemented digital accessibility in our project. And since we are in a very small group, um, feel free to ask any questions, stop me at any time. If, I, if you need me to raise my voice or articulate a bit more, um, I'll be happy to. So what is digital accessibility? Um, since there are so many misconceptions, I tried to um, explain what it is and oppose that to what it isn't because um, some companies, unfortunately, try to sell certain products as if they would magically create digital accessibility when it really isn't the case. So accessibility is designing and developing websites and online tools in order for them to be accessible to people who have disabilities. So it has to be in the conception phase and the developing phase. It's also coding a website with accessibility in mind. So it has to go in the code of the website. Um, it's a basic human right, uh, according to the UNCRPD, the Convention on uh, the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So it's te technically le legally binding because also it's required by the Euro European Accessibility Act. What, sorry, what isn't digital accessibility is, for example, a plugin that can be added to a, a website. Uh, maybe you've seen this before, a plugin where you can enlarge text or uh, voice some aspects of the of the website. That's not necessarily digital ac accessibility. It can help some users, but accessibility has to go through the code of the website. 
Um, sometimes it's presented as optional features to improve uh, the user experience. Uh, sometimes it's presented as a one-click solution, a magical solution to address all the needs of all users. That's not realistic and it's not true. And it's definitely not an act of charity of some sort because it is a human right. Um, it's also, so digital accessibility is to create content that is compatible with the assistive technologies that people with disabilities use. So for example, if I was blind or if I was visually impaired, I would use something called a screen reader, which is a software that I would have on my phone or on my laptop that reads what's on a page. So the website has to be compatible with that technology. It's, for example, um, adding descriptions to images. So it's called alternative text, um, as well as adding subtitles to videos or audio description um, for people who can't see the video. Uh, it can also be um, transcribing or translating very complex content into simpler versions of the content or in plain language, we call it plain language or easy to read. Um, digital accessibility, accessibility is not a set of skills that's only for developers. So I'm not a, a developer, I don't code at all, but I still can work on digital accessibility because it addresses um, people who create Word documents, PDFs, PowerPoints, stuff like that. It's not a step to take at the very end of a project because it has to be, as I said, from the very beginning, the conception because it takes a lot more time to correct something that was not done properly than to take it into consideration from the beginning, which is why we were included in this project from the very beginning. <clears throat> and it's definitely not a waste of money or time because when it's taken into consideration from the very beginning and it's calculated within the budget, it's, it goes smoothly. But usually the excuses we hear from our clients is that it takes too much time, it's too costly, but since it is a requirement, it should be taken into consideration from the very beginning. Why is it important? So aside from the legal obligation, I mean, there are so many legal obligations and maybe some people don't care about that aspect, but there is a human aspect to it. So first and foremost, it's addressing people with disabilities. It can be very useful for a lot of different people. And when I say disability, it can go from something people consider minor, like dyslexia, to uh, deafness, blindness, any motor skills, any cognitive or intellectual disabilities. But accessibility can create a better use, user experience for all users, regardless of their abilities. It's also very important because it provides autonomy, which is what we try to do in this project for everyone. <clears throat> so when we say that the course is accessible anywhere to anyone at any time, this also includes people with disabilities, so they can access it independently. Um, we also want to provide equal access, so there is no discrimination between the users um, trying to access the content of our uh, project. So in order to do that, uh, at the very beginning of the project, we started training uh, our partners. So Koena, we uh, provide training, trainings among other things. So here are some lovely pictures from our trainings. Um, you can see we work on coding, coding the website. Uh, we, this obviously went on Zoom. We have a checklist um, to make sure that everything is accessible. We were presenting that. Uh, you can see Peter here and Martin and me and another lovely person from Koena. Her name is Otsufi. And uh, the woman with Frida Kahlo in the background, this is my boss, Armoni. Um, so we provided two types of trainings for our partners. Uh, so the first training that was for everyone was the basics. So it's kind of an um, introduction to the project, to the, to the process of uh, taking in consideration disabilities in a project. And then there was two separate uh, trainings, one for web editors. So that's me, for example, I'm someone who creates Word, PowerPoint, PDF documents. Um, it was also on how to create accessible videos, so on how to add subtitles, for example. It was also on how to write content in easy to read and in plain language, which is a method to simplify text. And this was useful for our target group, especially because none of them, not all of them are native speakers in the languages we provide. And we also taught the partners how to check if a document is accessible. 
uh, so they can be autonomous and independent in their working process. We also provided a training for web developers, so people who code the website, who created the platform, uh, on how to use WordPress in an accessible way. Uh, WordPress is, um, is a tool to create websites, uh, if you're not familiar with it. Um, and how to, for example, these are all examples, how to check for adequate color contrasts. So color contrasts are very important uh, for people who have any type of visual uh, impairment. For people who are colorblind, um, colors must be contrasted enough. Um, how to add alternative text to images. So alternative text is a description of the image that the screen reader picks up and says to the user. Uh, and again, how to check if a web page is accessible. So you see all of these skills, it shows really how it's not an overnight solution. You can't just get one training and the next day we would know everything about accessibility. It's a very rich field and it takes a lot of training and a lot of knowledge. So here are some uh, screenshots I included from some of the guidelines uh, we provided for the partners. So here we were showing them how to add alternative text on Word in WordPress, so the website, how to code um, in an accessible way in HTML, um, how to provide text that is in plain, that is an easy to read language. And this, the blue uh, logo is the easy to read logo. How to check if the colors are contrasted, if they follow the accessibility guidelines. And as for the implementation, so uh, we worked on the accessibility of the platform and the accessibility of the content itself. So the accessibility of, plat of the platform, uh, we tested the platform. So we have uh, something that's called an audit in accessibility. So we have auditors who work at Goina who take a website and there's a checklist with many different criteria in order to issue an accessibility statement. So what we did for this project was a mini audit. It's called the diagnosis. So you would check the website for certain criteria to make sure that it, it's accessible. You uh, issue an accessibility statement that tells the users uh, to what extent your website is accessible and what are the different um, boundaries or problems that they may face. So just so that they would know. So it's obviously not, as you can see, it's not um, an easy fix. So definitely any project would still have um, some accessibility issues, but we try to get to a point where there are no major um, boundaries for users. Um, the quizzes as well, we worked on that. We tried to give full control of the navigation to the users. So if you have, if you've done uh, any online quizzes, sometimes when you, when you pick a, a, a solution, you find yourself going directly to the next question. This could be tricky for some users who have any attention span deficits or uh, their screen reader would not be able to pick up on the text in time. So we gave full control of the navigation to the users. We can show you. So once you click the, um, once you choose the correct answer, you would still be on the same page and you'd have this arrow here and you would click on it whenever you're ready to move on to the next question. Um, and as for the content itself that's available on the platform, so for the PDFs, they were originally uh, Word documents. So we taught the partners how to add alternative text to all of the images um, in the Word documents. Um, they tried as much as possible to keep the content in a plain language, in a simple language. And it was inspired by easy to read rules. And as for the videos, they included subtitles um, that replicate what's being said in the videos. So here's an example of how to, um, yes, it's, it's a bit in French, but um, on Word, basically every image you can add uh, an alternative text to it. And as for the videos, um, as you can see, we have subtitles for the videos. And um, as for the content itself, uh, just a quick advertisement. <laughs> Um, module 14 is really um, focused on accessibility, on how to include accessibility in your project, in your process of developing a green business. So we worked on that as well. Um, if you're interested, you can go online, you'll find it. Um, it has a lot of, um, it addresses a lot of the accessibility rules 
and uh, it's like a, it's a bit like a tutorial on how to uh, create accessible content um, online and using Word, PDF, and a bit of um, coding, I think. As I said in the introduction, the refugee and migrants integrate up. The refugees and migrants uh, organizations, as well as those organizations that are assisting refugees and migrants, can benefit a lot from the digital technologies and also building tailor-made uh, platforms for, for the target group. And uh, the Go for the Green digital platform is one of the examples how this is happening. And of course, now with the, all the digital resources and solutions that are available, it's uh, not necessary to be an uh, IT expert, IT technician, or web developer in order to build platform and uh, there are a lot of solutions that uh, that we used in this term in uh, in our project as well as we're only using open source and free of charge uh, tools and platforms so and uh, softwares for the development of the platform of course we have uh, external consultants part of the consortium uh, in the face of Quena that supported the platform with the accessibility which is one of the pillar of the project so I'm going to present a little bit the technical aspects of the learning platform that are uh, one of the milestones and the, the core, uh, core values of the, the platform. Um, we wanted to create a platform that is uh, very simple and very easy to be used as well as uh, to, to be uh, operational on devices with uh, low, uh, low system requirements uh, as well as with um, uh, can be open and can be accessed with, uh, from people with uh, poor internet connection or with low bandwidth uh, connection, which is creating uh, uh, better access for the people to the knowledge supported in the platform. Of course, simple doesn't mean simplified, it means uh, efficient. The platform also, we wanted to keep it completely open and uh, keeping it without login for two reasons, because people now are sick and tired from uh, login and uh, remembering passwords all the time and to, to keep that knowledge open, always and, uh, and forever to be open, as well as also to comply with the, with the GDPR, because collecting uh, personal information uh, about uh, refugees and migrants, it's, uh, it's also a, a concern related to the data protection, especially those sensitive information that, uh, that is concerning the, the refugees and entities. This is one of the the, the points that uh, and another that we are keeping the platform absolutely open without uh, without registration. Of course, uh, as almost all the website, our platform was optimized for mobile devices because uh, most of even most of the locals as well as the target group is using a lot of 50-50% uh, uh, mobile devices uh, via uh, laptops or desktop computers. The, the mobile devices are becoming much more um, popular, popular for accessing uh, information online, which also includes the, the knowledge and people are learning from mobile devices uh, now even with, with the, this open knowledge. Um, about the technical aspects of the platform, it is built on WordPress, which is one of the most popular content management systems that are used to be built uh, on the website. As WordPress is divided, one platform, million of possibilities, global creative agencies, local businesses, and your neighbors, neighbors' personal blog are using WordPress. So Go for the Green is also using WordPress as a, a content management system that it's thing behind, uh, behind the platform and that it's uh, used to, to be created uh, a user, very user-friendly platform for uh, refugees as well as for trainers. As I told you that, um, that the platform, we don't invite any digital tools. The platform is just an example of how the digital tools are used on the practice. Like we are using a lot of external tools and solutions and generally the, the global trend is now that uh, software is used as a service, like the platforms, they're also used as a service. Like for the videos, we don't host the videos on the platform, we are hosting the videos on YouTube. The quizzes are not developed by ourselves, the system behind the quizzes is not uh, a go for the green product, but we are using H5P uh, technology to, to develop it. 
the feedback form is WIM survey, which is accessible solution, which was recommended by our partner Quena. The community we are using Slack, which is a system that uh, is already proven in developing of uh, digital communities. The certification we are using the system that is uh, used by the ECQA, the BIS Examiner. And the P PDF modules are the only one, uh, only one files in the platform that are self-hosted. So if we can take something from, uh, from the Go for the Green project uh, about the organization is that they can use a lot of, uh, a lot of platforms that are open source, free of charge and uh, to integrate in their existing platforms and uh, in order to keep it uh, as much as possible uh, simple and uh, user friendly and because these solutions are already proven to, to be to, to be effective. The mobile optimization was was our goal also with uh, the technical partners as well as with the accessibility consultants uh, from Quena. Uh, so the platforms fit perfectly to, to all mobile devices, including those devices which are outdated and with low system uh, resources. And uh, the platform is still, uh, is, the platform is running very smoothly, even with uh, with old phones and uh, old computers and old devices. That it's uh, also creating a better access to the education and to knowledge to the to the target group. So another. Another point that the organization are going to use just not uh, not to create uh, too, too fancy platforms or too heavy platforms, just the platforms need to be light and optimized as much as possible for a better access to, to knowledge and uh, to, to digital resources. How we came with that? First, to develop the platform, we had a consultation with leading key learning experts, including those who are working with non-formal education because the non-formal education is also using key learning platforms and uh, they can give us a lot of uh, lot of uh, meaningful insight as well as with university e-learning experts that are uh, giving information how actually it's working on a more proper and systematic way we're using both the formal and non-formal uh, approach to create the, the learning platform the online learning platform of course, it's uh, discussed with uh, experts in the field of refugee integration, uh, which also includes training. How, um, what kind of, um, what kind of information refugees can uh, can provide to, or they cannot provide in the learning platform, like the login credentials. That's another point that we came uh, when we discuss it with uh, with uh, refugee integration practitioners. Of course, with the accessibility experts and editors, our platform go through diagnosis and uh, accessibility audit, and after that we implemented the the, the recommendation that were uh, were made from that because the accessibility is very important part of the project as uh, as a public resource. It can be uh, it needs to be accessible by everyone, including with people with disabilities. And uh, to have equal access, everyone should have equal access to the to the to the platform. And of course, the platform is consulted uh, also with refugees, with the target group, as uh, it's a general it's a general principle in the refugee protection and integration work that we are not doing anything for refugees without their participation. That's why we wanted to invite and uh, work and collaborate with refugees as much as possible in order to. To, to discuss the layout and uh, the content of the platform, including this was also incorporated in the project uh, methodology in the focus group with uh, with the refugees. And we also like the way how we are mixing the refugees with with practitioners and with the experts in the uh, in the field. And this is creating equality between uh, between them. We are working also to the target group as experts. Uh, that we are gaining a lot of valuable insight for the creation of the platform. So this is one another advice when uh, digital platforms and resources are created for the target group, it should be created with also with their participation and their collaboration. So this is from my side about the platforms. If you have any questions, you can reach us. So, uh, as I said before, we produced uh, per uh, module uh, a lecture video, uh, all in all, 
75 uh, lecture videos. We did this in the studio from MGL video in the 20th uh, district, as you can see here. So there is um, the studio and um, in the second picture, you see there is a camera and um, the good thing was that there is a teleprompter. Do you know what this is? Yeah, so um, it was way faster to produce these videos, otherwise it would have taken uh, ages to do this. Um, Gladi uh, uh, already told uh, you that uh, these videos are hosted on uh, YouTube. Uh, and for the, each uh, language we have a, a, a section. And um, actually now I want to show you uh, one video. Welcome to module 12. In the next few chapters, you will learn to define your business goals to use the SMART method, independently develop your green business, determine your individual resilience strategy, and see opportunities and create value for a green business. First, some basic information about module 12. This module contains three exercises. You will need about 15 hours to finish this module. To pass the exam, you need 66% correct answers. And your teachers are Susanne, Tiziana, and Klaus. In previous modules, you learned the importance of setting yourself milestones and creating an action plan when starting a new business. In this module, you will learn how to achieve your business goals using the SMART method. First, ask yourself, are your goals realistic? Are your goals formulated correctly? And can you actually achieve your goals? SMART is an effective tool that provides the clarity, focus, and motivation you need to achieve your goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. Following the steps in this method, you will learn and practice to create clear and specific goals, track your progress and stay motivated, set realistic and attainable goals for your business, ensure that those goals are matter to you and those around you, and finally, you will learn how to make sure that you have set deadlines and time targets for your projects. The greatest glory lies not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. Many great people, including Nelson Mandela, have used this quote to explain that perseverance, or simply not giving up, means to them. In Module 10, we discussed what motivation is and how to motivate yourself. In the following chapters, we will discover the concepts of resilience and perseverance and look closer at ways to keep going when you feel like giving up. Resilience refers to both the process and the outcome of successfully adapting to difficult or challenging life experiences. Learning to be more resilient will help you in both your personal and your professional life. Building resilience takes time, strength, and help from people around you. You'll likely experience setbacks along the way. Being resilient doesn't mean that you never feel stress, frustration, or sadness but it means you can deal with those emotions and situations in a better way. What are some other ways to become resilient? Think positive. You can't always control life-changing events, but you can control how you respond to them. Look after yourself. Use your support network. Work towards a goal. And don't be afraid or embarrassed to seek help. That concludes Module 12. In the next chapters, you'll learn how to mobilize and work with others and create accessible content for your green business. Good luck. If you want to take a look at uh, our platform, uh, go for go for the green. There you find um, for uh, every language uh, the different uh, modules, or you find it uh, as I said before on the uh, our YouTube channel. This is more or less the workshop. Thanks a lot for joining.